really know where to begin, but in, like in terms of football, all my life, like um, football put me to school. I've always played football all my life. I was in scholar in Los Green Hills since grade six, all the way to senior high school. And then I graduated. I tried taking my football out of this country. So I went to England in, in trials. I trialed in Bournemouth and then I went to Spain. What I did was I did exhibition matches where there were scouts watching. So scouts will watch and they pick out players there and then they take you to where, which club that you could probably play in. So one scout, name was Steven, he brought me to Spain and I tried out for a club called Unionistas. They play in like the third league and there were three of us and well, we didn't make it because they, they thought we were too young and we weren't really fit in their system of play. And so I thought like, you know, finding football like in England outside here was really hard. So I came back. And at the same time, when I was coming back, La Salle was still up for the offer for the scholarship. So I did two years in DLSU. And so I, so after two years, I stopped playing football because I didn't see any future with it for me, financially, in that sense. And like, you know, when, when you're willing to give up other opportunities for, for football, like I just didn't see, like it, I didn't really weigh it out that well. Like I, I didn't see any opportunity that I could grab and you know, something I could use to help my family or myself. So then, yeah, I, I just did modeling, like paid, paid the bills, paid the rent. So I did that for two years. You know, I was trying to find what I could do with my life. I was trying to find myself in a, in a sense, you know what I mean? Well, it's just my mom and I, actually. It's just my mom and I, we grew up together. So she, yeah, she raised me on her own. Like, she did whatever she could just to feed me, you know what I mean? And since it was just us two, we really couldn't afford them. Um, and she, she wasn't really working, so we couldn't afford any house. So we just stayed with our friends. Like, we'll rent out like a space and we'll stay with our friends. So I was always surrounded by really good friends and good environment, good family. So in a sense, like, I was raised well. Well, my dad is a Man U fan. I was actually born a Man U fan. Like, apparently, like, when I was born, my mom whispered into my ear, like, you're a Man U fan. <laughs> but I had no idea until I've seen, until I met my dad when I was 18. It's the first time I met my dad. And it was unreal. Like honestly, what an experience. And he, he, de he definitely spoiled me, he took me out, bought me stuff. And he took me to watch my first ever stadium experience in Old Trafford. And he brought me to Wembley as well, watch the FA Cup semi-final against Everton. It was, it was amazing. And ever since then, like I knew, like like I've always loved football. All right. It's like a way of life. You know what I mean? Like seeing everybody else in the stadium, like the way they were just so passionate about the sport. Like I couldn't even explain. Like unless you're there. All right. It's it's hard to put in words. Oh, it's hard to put in words to describe the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Just being in that stadium. But like. I figured, what was I really doing in my life without football? And by that I mean like without my passion or what like doing something I'm really passionate about. And ever since my club, my former club, Nomad Sports Club, ever since it's shut down, I question like what am I playing football for? Am I playing it for money, for myself, for my studies, or for a club that I really want to play for? And so it all came down to you know, how bad do you really want it? Like, how bad do you love the sport? How bad do you want to play for anybody else around you? And I got back into football when I heard about the ASCOS development team. Because then, like, it, it opened up the chance for me to play for the national team. And, like, playing for the national team is completely different. Like, I cannot explain, like, playing for... It's the same feeling that I had playing for Nomads, playing for a club that you actually are passionate for. Do you know what I mean? Like you play for your teammates, you're willing to like die for them and you're willing to play for your people. So I've made a commitment this year that I will just, I will train hard and give back. Give back to the people that's given me, you know, all these opportunities that I've got in my life. If I could get the chance to make a really big impact in terms of playing football for the Philippines, like say like getting the set piece done, because now I'm a center back. So imagine like scoring a last-minute goal for a really important game, let's say like Asian qualifiers 
and I get to head that. Like for me, that that was a big goal. Wearing the number four with a captain van, leading the, leading the national team. Like for me, that is the dream. All right. Yeah. So you dream to lead the national team in the number four kit. Yeah. Why the number four? It's passed down by legends and. And my my best friend had passed away. He carried a number four, right. and he was he was the captain of Nomads. Who's that? Eddie. Well, I lived with him for like five years, basically. Like my family and his family, we lived together, and and so he was really close to me. And and he passed away, and we don't even know why. You and Eddie grew up playing, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we grew up playing. I remember seeing you guys with Nomads all the time yeah. and stuff like that after the game, just kicking the ball. He was a good kid, dude. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, I did realize that, like, growing up as an adult and looking for yourself is mostly like just tracking back and looking back into your life of what you really wanted as a kid, you know what I mean? Like, what did you really dream about when you were a kid? And I feel like it's that it's that driven passion that keeps pushing you forward. Even as an adult, no matter what age you are, it's that kind of passion that's gonna keep you pushing forward towards your dream. Like, you know what I mean? Like eternal happiness, like, it's what's gonna make you really happy. And looking back, it's just like me playing football with my friends, at Nomads, watching all these the Ascos legends play out each other at the, at the very beginning of the football league. You know what I mean? Like I saw that firsthand the watching UFL, by yeah. the sidelines. Yeah, basically UFL at the very beginning of that. When it was just Kaya and Nomads rivalry, Meralco and Army. Jeff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff. Those are good times, bro. And like I look back, like that was it. Like that's just what I want to do for the rest of my life. And if I could do that and earn money to support my family and my friends like for me that that's that, that's that's amazing so so would you say that you're living the dream right now as of now yeah I would say like I am like I am but sometimes like you don't even know it but then like you get people around you that remind you that you actually are and in a way that that really humbles you down and it keeps pushing you forward